The world of Sikame is known to be ruled by humanoids. The sea folk are believed to be the rulers of the sea, but the sea folk know very well this is not the case. They know it can't be conquered. It can only be a friend or a foe. And the sea folk know that nature tends to be very creative in the way it chooses to protect its oceans. Today, we'll be crafting an Alpha King Crab. All right, everybody, this one, this one's gonna be fun. We're gonna use a lot of pink foam for this one. So get your scraps together and let's start this project. I'm gonna try to mimic the shape of the crabs that I used for the other video as much as possible. So I draw myself a football sort of shape, a really bad football shape, and just start cutting around it. The idea is to keep the top of the crab as flat as possible so we're only going to round off the edges but for the bottom half you want to make that look like a potato a sweet potato you also want to define where the shell will end and where the underbelly begins I first draw where the shell will be and then I come back to it at an angle You want to take out as much foam away from the underbelly to make the shell look a lot thicker. And you don't have to worry about getting clean cuts. Trust me, there's a way to fix all of this and also give it a little bit of texture. We'll be using fire for that. But make sure to do this in a very well ventilated area or just do it outside. I should have done it outside now thinking about it. Oh well. And now it's time for the clamps I mean the claws it's time for the claws and again I'm just using scraps here and as you can tell there's already a line on this piece but I, I actually end up using it for something I was like I'm not gonna get a whole new piece just for this and the idea behind these crabs is they're like metallic they're, they're, they're basically tanks so I'm gonna go with that and I'm just gonna make these claws look like they belong in a tank. I'm very paranoid when it comes to gluing pink foam together. I actually like using hot glue, but I wanna feel confident enough that this will stay together. This is why I always add sticks and pin the pieces together as I glue them. This is where I say, I'm not gonna let this line ruin my craft. I'm gonna use it. And so I choose to make it seem like the claws have a metallic plate welded around them. When you're sculpting, it is just as important as when you paint to repeat patterns. So the pattern I'm going for here is actually the same pattern I did for the shell. I want to make this look like it belongs together. Right here I had two options, which I think I ended up taking the easiest one out of the two, but maybe not the best one. I was poking the holes where the nails would go on this, but I think I could have made them more like bolts and I could have had them actually come out instead of going in. 
For this next section, I want to make it look like this guy's been in a few fights. And obviously, he won those fights. So I want to make it look like he got shot with spears, harpoons, you know, all those things. Let's move on to crafting those arms. For this next part, I'm basically going to be using the same technique that I used on the mushroom builds. Only, this time they won't be mushrooms obviously. But it's the same technique, so if you've done that, you know what to do. We're going to be making four of these. And we're going to be using again the lighter to texture it. Just be very careful when you're using the fire. Make sure to hot glue and pin every section you're gluing together. Alright, so we got the arms ready, but you don't want to make it difficult for yourself and start gluing them on before you have the face ready. So I'm cutting an area where the mouth will be. I'm making an indentation. And then I'll be adding clay around it to emphasize how monstrous this guy is. But before you add the clay, you want to make sure to add the eyes. We're using pearl beads for this. No, we're not giving this guy a mustache. Now that I think about it, that would have been a cool idea. Just giant crab with giant mustache. That'd be cool. Uh, sidetracked. Make sure to add water to smoothen things out. And then we gotta make this guy look angry. You know, I don't like non-angry looking monsters. Even if they're not bad guys. Anyways, we want to give this guy some ferocious teeth, right? So we're going to get some toothpicks. Now the trick here is to stick the toothpicks in between the foam and the clay, not through the pink foam. What you'll achieve here is actually making it look like the teeth are coming from the gums. You're going to repeat the same steps to get the bottom jaw finished. Because the clay on the top is still soft, I wanna make sure to use these tools to get the teeth in to make sure I don't mess with the teeth on the top half. All right, crab mouths are weird. So what I'm going to do here is add two more jaws on the side of the face. These jaws, I guess, are going to be like holding the prey down while it chews it with the middle section. So its claws are still free to pumble things up with. It makes sense inside my head, all right? This is a little extra tip right here. This, what I'm doing right now, is nothing crazy. It's just adding a design. You really don't want flat surfaces, or a lot of flat surfaces. As you can tell, even on the top of the crab, I kind of ran the fire through a little bit to make sure that it wasn't flat. Flat makes it very hard to paint, in my opinion. So I need textures to help me out. When the face finally dries, make sure to add tacky glue to all the toothpicks, just to fortify them. Make sure they don't fall out. For the base, I'm gonna use a CD and very thin cardboard, and I'm just gonna stack the cardboard on top of the CD. The reason why I'm stacking it so high is because I wanna stick a coffee stir through the bottom but I want to keep the round part at the bottom, 
right where the hole of the CD is. I run a pen through all the cardboard and then I put the stir through it. And then I start adding hot glue on the whole thing. Nothing too crazy, I guess, I don't think. We're gonna pin our guy right on that stir. Something I learned from drawing is you don't always want to have your guy just stand up straight, flat, like you want to give it some dynamic. Yes, I'm gonna make this difficult on myself, but you don't have to. That's why I'm gluing him at an angle. It's just to give him a more dynamic look. This is where we're gonna start by gluing one of the arms, the top one. You can assemble your second arm, but I wouldn't glue it just yet. I would actually wait until we're done painting it to glue it. We're actually gonna continue with the legs, which surprisingly, this has gotta be one of the toughest part of the build, in my opinion. This is really where I start to wing all my measurements because of all the angles. Maybe I should have assembled all the legs first, glued them onto the piece before I actually glued my giant crab to the base. Eh, you live and you learn. And like I mentioned before, if you need some extra practice, check out the video with the mushrooms. I basically use the same technique for this and it might make it a little bit easier when you actually go take on this crab monster project. For the longer pieces, what I end up doing is actually driving the skewer all the way through the foam. This will prevent the foam from actually breaking. The only difference for the end pieces is that you just gotta make it look pointy. That's it. When you're joining these pieces together, don't worry about how messy it looks at first. We're gonna be adding clay to it. You just wanna make sure that it's glued on very, very well. And for the other leg here, I just decided to put it together first and then glue it on. It seemed a little bit easier, same results. Trying to get into some of these small areas is pretty tough. And this is where I start to make the legs look like they're actually part of the body and not just glued there. And that's why you don't have to worry about leaving some gaps behind when you're gluing this. It doesn't have to be glued perfectly because you're gonna hide most of those mistakes with clay. To make it easier on yourself, add a little bit of water where you're thinking of putting the clay. It helps the clay stick to the foam. This is where you want to get rid of all the messy joints. So I'm adding the clay wherever it looked too messy or where it looked like I kind of messed up. We're adding crowns to this. Yes, multiple. In the Crab Society, in my game, these monsters, they're actually part of a pecking order, a hierarchy. And the more crowns you have, the stronger you are, the more food you get. And that's why this guy has four crowns.
From here is the usual stuff. We're gonna primer this using Black Magic Crafts Black Primer Mod Podge Mix. Then I dry brush the whole thing with a light gray. I paint all the armor pieces in a copper. I paint the main body purple as well as the middle section for the crowns. I dry brush my purple to make sure that my highlights show up the color I want them to show up. With the silver paint, I add highlights to the copper. I also add them to the spears. I also add another layer of dry brushing white to the purple area. One of the reasons why I do the dry brush is to make sure that my color comes out nice and also because magenta is my favorite color. We're giving this guy some bright red eyes and we're adding some white highlights. I promise we're almost there. Just a few more steps and we'll be done. What you see me doing here is mixing some PVA glue with a little bit of green paint. I'm using those spiderweb Halloween things to make it look like algae. Is it algae, baby? Algae? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Seaweed. Algae. Your mom. Got him. All right, all right. I get my one stupid moment per video. That one was it. And you might notice that the green in my hand is actually super green. While the green I'm applying seems to be a little bit darker, that's because I dip my finger on my right hand on a little bit of brown wash and as I'm putting it I'm applying the wash as well Yeah, this guy needs some sweet accessories. We're gonna start off with the cannons. And yes, of course this guy needs cannons. And don't forget, cannonballs. Of course. What else is he gonna fight ships with? Alright guys, thank you very much again for watching this episode of Frankie D Crafter. If you like what I do here and would like to support the channel, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. Or use one of my affiliate links in the description below. Thank you very much again. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, all those things, alright? If you'd like to know how I crafted this cannons and the cannonballs, let me know in the description below. Maybe I'll put out a video on that. Thank you very much again. I'll catch you on the flippity side. Peace.